let me just change things here just to show you that's pretty much what we're planning to do today we'll be dealing with the idea of God's uh, revelation uh, to all mankind we'll be talking a little bit about nature and conscience uh, that's this is basically Romans chapters 1 and 2 well, by the way, if uh, the way that I say sounds funny, <laughs> it is funny. Sometimes I mix Portuguese and English grammar, so it, it gets all messed up. Uh, and I, if you don't understand, Q&A at the end, ask. I was speaking in Portugal years ago uh, at the University of Coimbra, and it was very interesting. After everything said and done, one student raised its hand and said, uh, I have a question. I said, yes. Uh, what do you mean by billion? Because in Portugal, they don't use billions. They use thousands of millions. And he didn't know what billions means. So if I say something that you don't understand, ask. So that's uh, today. We're going to take a look at this. Next week, uh, God reveals his nature through nature. We're going to find out what nature is all about. If you remember last time, going from very far to very close and small stuff that I did, we're going to do it again in a different way. Uh, our third lesson will be about the origin of the universe uh, and the God without beginning. We're going to be talking about the most recent discoveries about the universe. How amazing it is that Genesis 1 is exactly what we have been discovering. Exactly. Just one quick example. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 says that the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. That means there should be water molecules in the beginning of the universe. That's exactly what we found. Water molecules at billions of light years away from us. In a time that there was not enough, uh, let me put this way, stars, they were not old enough to produce enough oxygen to produce water molecules. Unreal. And people, they don't know what to do with that. Uh, this past week, there was a little message, a little note on American uh, scientific, uh, American science magazine. Yeah, scientific American, I'm sorry, putting Portuguese in English. Scientific American. Uh, and what happened is uh, they said that the James uh, Webb Space Telescope found what shouldn't be there. I put a little note to my friend said, well, the James Webb Space Telescope found what the Bible said that would be there. That's amazing. So in our fourth lesson, we'll be talking a little bit about the heavens, uh, the beauty of the heavens and the glory of our God. Lesson number five, we'll be talking about the size of the universe and a God who is infinite. The universe is not infinite. It's finite. There is an end. We don't know what is after that, but we know that it's finite. It's amazing. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit about life, the origin of life, how life came to exist, and the, all the things that relate to life, and we're dealing a little bit with the life giver. Where does life come from? We'll be dealing also about the biodiversity. Uh, I mean, there are things that are out there that we have no idea that they do exist, and they are amazing. I keep on thinking, you know, God's creativity, most people, they don't know that they do exist. Have you ever thought about a little tiny insect that has gears in, his, uh, in its uh, hinge legs in order to jump? Two sets of gears, one for each leg. And the gears, they have to be precise, otherwise, the little insect could not jump straight forward. A small difference in the gears, it would always jump to the wrong side. And by the way, the gears change as the insect grows. It's amazing. It's really amazing. And uh, this is related also with the next class that we'll be seeing, which is, deals with the complexity of life, how complex life is. I mean, think about it. Each one of us, we start just as a single cell. In that little tiny cell, everything to make your bones, for instance, how it knows that where is the end of the bone, the size of the bone, what will be the outside, what will be the inside? How to put this whole thing together? I mean, you have a little tiny piece of information like uh, this tall, which is our DNA if we stretch everything, 
all the information to make you and I are there inside. Think about if Windows would be like that, Windows operating system. It would be amazing. And uh, then we'll start talking about the fossil record and the judgment of God. That's pretty much what we'll be seeing during these next nine weeks. Okay? As I said, I would like to be able to work things in a very compact way, about 30, 35 minutes, and then a few minutes for questions and comments, whatever, towards the end. Okay, let's talk a little bit about God's revelation to all mankind. And there is a way that God has done that. And if you look at Romans chapters one and two, it's very interesting to see how God provided a way for every single human being to know that there is a God and that there is a creator. People keep on asking me, but what about the aborigines in Australia? How God's gonna judge them? They never heard about God. Wrong. Paul said they did. He said, how, how did they do? Uh, how, how that happened? And Paul just tells us how that happened. There are two main important things talking about God's revelation because God wants to reveal himself to every single human being. He's a righteous God. He'll not let people in the dark. That's for sure. And Romans tell us about this. It's amazing because in Romans chapters uh, 1 and 2, Paul was basically describing this. If you take Romans chapters 1, 2, and 3, it's very interesting. In Romans chapter 1, Paul's saying, people, they do have nature. Everything that's possible to know about God is there. Nobody's born an atheist. There's no such thing. They become an, an atheist. But nobody's born one. You're amazing about the things there out there. Now, I have two grandchildren. Uh, a few years ago in the summer, they were at home, and one thing they want to do at night, they want to go outside and see the stars. And even though it's hard to see stars here in Greenville because, uh, sorry, but the northern hemisphere doesn't see the Milky Way the way we see it in the southern hemisphere. It's completely different. We see it, the whole thing. I mean, it's beautiful. And they want to go outside and every, they look at those stars and they keep on thinking, what else do we have there? And uh, Grandpa Da, I mean, they call me Grandpa Da. Uh, the, uh, Grandpa Da is the scientist in the family. You know, he has to know everything and tell about everything and so forth. So they kept on asking about the universe. So I said, let me show you some things. And uh, I took my computer and I was showing them what is out there. They were amazed. And my little grandson, uh, they, at the time he was three going four, said, Ooh, who did that? That was his question. Nobody is born an atheist. No one. We become, I mean, they become atheists along the way. So this is God's revelation. He wants people to know that he is, that there is a God. He knows, he understands, but he is the creator. And the way that God reveals himself, as Paul writes to us, is in two different ways. In a written format, in a unwritten format. Okay, if you look at Genesis, uh, uh, Romans 1 and 2, uh, basically what Paul is talking about is this unwritten format. And if you take a little bit later, chapters 3, half of chapter two and then going to chapter three, Paul's talking about the Jews, said they received the law, they received God's law. I mean, everything that is, God wants them to know, it was in written form. So you have those two sides of God's revelation. And when we talk about the non-written form, you have two areas, one is nature, which is the external revelation, the other one is conscious which is the internal revelation. By the way, this is just an introduction. Without it, it would be difficult to work later on to, when you start talking about the other things. Uh, you'll see, well, what do you mean by nature? What is nature? And I would like to show you what's nature, what's, why God created nature. Let me give you just one quick example concerning this type of revelation. God is eternal. Try to describe what means eternal if you don't know what time is. How do you describe eternal? You see, God created time 
so we will be able to understand what means to be eternal. If time was not created, you and I would never know what means to be eternal. See, God, when he created all things, it's for us to understand who he is, to have an idea. And we'll be dealing with a little bit more with that. So, talking about the conscience, let's start with the conscience first, because Paul wrote something very interesting. He says, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them and other times even defending them. It's very interesting. Uh, I saw my little granddaughter once she was in the room, and my daughter walked in, and she immediately put her hands on the back. Why? Because mama said, don't eat cookies. Guess what she was doing? She was eating cookies. And she tried to hide. Well, it was in her face, the sin, because it was all over her mouth. So <laughs> she tried to hide, but she was not able to. I'm going to show you in a few more minutes some quotes from scientists who try in many different ways to conceal this type of knowledge that God has given to everyone. It's amazing the way they do. It's really amazing. So, conscience is one inside revelation that God has given to everybody. Um, I'm going to work a little bit more about that. And the reason is very simple. If you take a look, why there is so many religions in the world. Religion, nothing is more than trying to create peace with God. But why is, would any person want to be at peace with God? because it is inside. They want to find a way, how can I please this God? And it's amazing because it has all to do with a guilty feeling inside of them. It is in there. Um, this type of knowledge is common knowledge, it's everywhere. If you take an Aborigine in Australia, pygmies in Africa, whatever, whoever. They all have exactly, exactly the same, same knowledge because God gave them. God's the righteous God, so he provided that for them. So one way to deal with this guilty feeling is religion in the way that we know it, okay? People trying to please God. The other way is going the opposite way is the athe atheism. So there is no God. Live life as if God would not exist. Uh, Richard Dawkins, a few years ago, he had a very interesting uh, panel put in the buses in London. Perhaps God doesn't exist, so enjoy life. That was the saying. Uh, what do you mean by enjoy life? Isn't that interesting? So do the things that your conscience tells you not to do. Perhaps God doesn't exist. It's amazing because when we talk about religion, there are two main things, two important things talking about religion. You can see one of them is just self-flagellation. Uh, you hurt yourself to please God. And the other one is basically good works. So those are the two ways that Religion tries to calm down what is inside of everybody, talking about guilt feelings. I mean, I'm showing things that people do outside God's way of doing it. Okay? Because God sent us his son. He said, I know how to deal with that. But people, they don't. So they, that's basically what they do. Uh, and when we talk about atheism, which is pretty much now, uh, let me put this way, People are very proud nowadays to be atheists. It's amazing the number of young people, especially pre-college students, they come to talk to me and they say how proud they are because now they are atheists. They know that God does not exist. And I, 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 I like to talk to them about it. 
I asked them, how do you know? Usually they come to me, have you ever seen God? And I asked them, have you ever seen an atom? How do you know that the atoms do exist? Have you seen one? No, we don't. But they say, well, but do you feel God? Do you feel gravity? Explain to me what's gravity. Well, gravity, uh, it's pulling together. No, you're telling me what it does. I want to know what it is. That's different. We don't know what gravity is. If you find out, there is a Nobel Prize waiting for you. <laughs> we just know what it does. We don't know what it is. But people are so excited about it because they are atheists. And that's where we are right now. I don't know how many of you, how many of you saw a couple of, last week, uh, Fox News had a very interesting article about Christianity in America. In 2040, Christianity will be minority in America. If you have any doubt, go visit the church. See how many churches you have people with ages between 30 and 50. Very few. So when we are gone, who will be in our place? You see? So we have a problem. So let me show you a little bit what some of the other guys, uh, some of the uh, atheists are saying. I'm going to use Richard Dawkins uh, and some others because they have very interesting things to say. Richard, Richard Dawkins said this, the, the following. The universe you observe has precisely the properties we should expect it, it there is. Uh, at the bottom, no design, no evil, no good, nothing but blind, pitless indifference. That's not true. That doesn't make sense when we look at the universe. No, that's his perception. It's a little bit different. Another thing that he said is very interesting. You can even begin to understand biology. You can't understand life unless you understand what it's all there for, how it arose. And that means evolution by itself. Isn't it amazing that we are just here by chance? I mean, I look at my watch. What's the probability that my watch would be here by chance? That's ridiculous, never. I mean, all the parts coming together and precisely fine-tuned. Remember that every single part of my watch doesn't tell time. The whole thing tells time. If you take just one little tiny bit of your watch and look at, what time is it? You see that little tiny gear? It's not telling you anything. It's the whole thing. But how did the whole thing came with a purpose? Where did the purpose came from? You see, um, he said several other things that I believe they're interesting for us to take a look. One more, he said, the idea of a divine creator belittles the elegant reality of the universe. But you know, why is he saying that? Because God has placed something in his heart. It is in there. And he tries in every single possible way to say, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. And his conscious keep on saying, it is, I told you, it is, it is, it is, I am telling you, it is. And keep on saying, no, it's not. One more. I'm against religion because it teaches us to be satisfied with not understanding the world. I have to tell you that there is a little bit of truth in what he said. Because a lot of times when I talk to Christians, uh, my fellow brothers and sisters, and we talk about creation, talk about the beginning, they come to me and say, oh, it is by faith. Yeah, I understand there's one part which is by faith. We're gonna see that, Romans chapter 11. And Romans chapter 11 tells us that we, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. That's faith. By science, we are able to see if something has been created or 
came to existence by itself. We can do that by science. But by faith, we can understand that God did it through his word. So creation is not a matter of science. How God did it is a matter of religion, two different things. And there's one more here that uh, I keep uh, telling you about uh, those guys. Yeah, and uh, I like reading uh, Richard Dawkins because it's so easy to see Romans 1 and 2 in action. Look what he says. Be thankful that you have a life and forsake your vain and presumptuous desire for a second one. What he says is the probability for us not being here is huge. Just the fact that we are here, we should be amazed. So don't worry about a second life. Enjoy this. Yeah, yeah. I understand. But there is one that, uh, he's a physicist, he's very well known, uh, Lawrence Krauss. Look what he said not too long ago. The amazing thing is that every atom in your body came from a star that exploded. And the atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand. It really is uh, the most poetic thing I know about physics. You are all stardust. You couldn't be here if the stars hadn't exploded because the elements, the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, iron, all the things that matter for evolution weren't created at the beginning, at uh, the beginning of time. They were created in the nuclear furnaces of stars. And the only way they could get into your body is if those stars were kind enough to explode. So, forget Jesus. The stars died so that you could be here today. Isn't that amazing? Can you see Romans 1 and 2? It's there. Why they, he's putting Jesus in the middle of physics in that way? That's because in his mind, in his conscience, everything's telling, there is a creator. There is one. You see, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Uh, and I like when people get into debate between Christians and non-Christians. There are things that are very, very neat. Stephen Hawking's few months before he passed away, he said, heaven is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. I don't know how many of you, of you know uh, uh, John Lennox. He's a mathematician in Oxford. He said, Atheism is a fairy story for people afraid of the light. I mean, those guys, they are sharp. So this whole idea that we have is that there is a conscience. It's internal. Every single person has it. Evolution in one way is uh, a way of trying to prove that things would have come into existence without a divine power or an amazing uh, wisdom, intelligence, or whatever. Okay, that's the idea basic of evolution, and we'll be talking a little bit about that. Just to finish very quickly, the second part is the one that we'll be dealing basically throughout this next few weeks, dealing with nature, is God's revelation, his revelation to us. Uh, Romans chapters one, chapter one, verses 19 to 20 says, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it, it plain to them. Everybody knows about him. It doesn't matter what. They may not know about Jesus, the plan of salvation, all that. I understand. But that there is a God, there is a creator, everybody knows. It's unreal. I, many years ago, was in Brazil uh, visiting some of the tribes in the northern part of the country in the Amazon area. I mean, they believe that there is a creator. Who told them? I have friends working in different areas of the country as missionaries. There's one working in the Papua Guinea. It's amazing. People there, they know that there is a creator. You take the aborigines in Australia. They know that there is a creator. Where the idea of creator came from? 
Richard Donkin said something years ago that I thought it was really interesting. He said, it's amazing. It, it feels like human brain was not, it doesn't work in the way to understand evolution. Uh, of course, we're not great to believe in lunatic or craziness. You know, we're created to understand and to believe in things that they do make sense. If I look at this ball, bottle of water here, tell me, anybody here would believe that this bottle would, came to, would have come to, into existence by itself? That doesn't make sense. Think about your cell. We'll be dealing with that in a few more weeks. I mean, all the information to make you... And uh, listen, we are talking only about the hardware, okay? I didn't even touch the software. Because our bodies, uh, biology deals only with hardware. We want to know where is the software? Where did the software come from? Think about it, just for me to itch the tip of my nose. How do my finger know where is the tip of my nose? <laughs> you know, and all the calculations that needs to be done and find where it is. Think about if you go, okay, a little bit more, 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 not yet, <laughs> not close. Go, <laughs> you know. Where did the software come from? Amazing. So, this whole idea of nature is what it is outside. That's an amazing revelation that God has given us. And the point that I would like to make is basically this. When we talk about nature itself, there are three things very, very important that the text tells us. The first one, that's whatever we can know about God has been revealed by God. Talking about general ways not specific ways. Nature doesn't tell us about God's love in a direct way, and I put it like this, okay? But it tells us about God's love in an indirect way. But everything that we can know about God, it is in nature. One thing that also says in verse two, two which for me is really amazing, says that the invisible qualities haven't been clearly seen. Well. I, now I have a little bit of question. How something that is invisible can be clearly seen? Isn't that amazing? So there are certain things that God is that we can see through nature. Those are the things that will be seen in the next few weeks, okay? And the third one, being understood by what has been made. What is being made is one word in Greek, is the word poema, from where we get the word poem. So nature is just God's poem for us. In other words, it's our poem that God wants us to read and to understand. So that's basically what we'll be doing these next few weeks, taking a look in God's poem, nature. We're gonna look at the sky, See what is out there. We're going to look different aspects. For instance, how old is the universe? Oh my, Genesis tells us that God created the universe in the fourth day. He brought galaxies and everything in the fourth day. Uh, and if you make a little calculations from Genesis up to now, you're talking about 6,000 years. And we have galaxies, galaxies at billions of light years. He didn't have enough time to get here, right, the light? What he did. How do we know? So those are the things that we'll be talking about in this next few weeks. So that's basically our game plan. That's what we'll be planning to do. Today, obviously, there is no question and answer. We are a little bit late. But uh, next week, we're going to start at 11.15. And we'll have some few minutes at the very end for Q&A. Let's pray. And then we are dismissed. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks because of your word, because of your creation. Uh, there are amazing things that you have provided for us to understand and to know a little bit more of you. The same way that we study your word, help us, Lord, to have the willingness to learn from your creation. Your son, Jesus, used so, so many examples from the creation, telling people, 
heavens is like or the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. And he gave some examples of daily life, of nature. So as we study about your creation, nature, the book of your words, uh, of your works, I pray, Lord God, that indeed you'll be even more amazed who you are. Again, thanks so much for this time together. Help us to enjoy what you have prepared for us in this next few weeks. And above all, I pray that we'll be able to know you better and to understand a lot more of who you are and to give you the proper honor and glory and worship that indeed you deserve. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Enjoy your Sunday.